Earth is the cradle of humanity, but you cannot stay in the cradle forever. It is time to go forth, become a star-faring civilization, be out there among the stars. This guy called Tsiolkovsky, one of the early Russian rocket scientists, the great saying, Earth is the cradle of humanity, but you cannot stay in the cradle forever. It is time to go forth, become a star-faring civilization, be out there among the stars, expand the scope and scale of human consciousness. I, I find that incredibly exciting. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to create deepfakes. Now, we will go step by step and see how we can implement this. And also, we will look at the backend. So, here we have two examples. Now, let's have a look at those. Earth is the cradle of humanity. You cannot stay in the cradle forever. It is time to go forth, become its so this example is the one that I tried out with my own video and then they also provide uh, some sample videos which you can use to test out the algorithm. So this is the one that they provide by default. But again, this is trained on my computer uh, using my uh, GPU. So as you can see, the result is quite good. Uh, I would not say it's perfect, but it is quite good. And especially when you think about how long did it take to train. Now for these videos, uh, it took about uh, two and a half to three hours to train on the GPU that I'm using. So all of the details I will be sharing uh, along the video. And by the end of the video, I will share some tips as well. And I have something special as well which is the cheat sheets and I have another document which is about the backend so what kind of technologies they are using and how it works and the other one is the cheat sheet on how to implement it so I will uh, use these two documents these two files to explain step by step as we go along so hopefully it will be easy to understand and if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. And if you like to do web development as well, check out my new channel about web development. And without further ado, let's get started. So here we are in the GitHub repository called DeepFace Lab, and it is by IP Rof. Now, they have quite a bit of examples that they have shown over here, and they, they, they look quite impressive. And they have a lot of videos that you can see as examples. And this is something that is very interesting to see that they started off with 64 by 64 image size, and now they are uh, getting up to 320 by 320, or even 448 by 448 which is quite amazing. So before we begin, uh, just make sure you read the license. It is free to use, but of course there are some restrictions. So make sure if you are using it in your project or commercial or whatever you are using it for, make sure you read and understand the license. And a big thanks to IP Rove and all the contributors that made it possible and open sourced it so that all of us, we can use it and have uh, these great deep fakes. So uh, they have the link to the paper here as well. You can read the paper as well. And I have uh, created this new course on deep fakes. So you can check it out there. And I will link all the papers that are relevant to this technique over here. So you might find, for example, face alignment, face detector, or other uh, possible areas related to this project. And you can read the, all of the papers over here. And of course, all the all the steps and the images and everything related to this project will be over here. Now, uh, this is free to use, so you can go here, you can uh, enroll. Uh, over here, it will show you enroll, and you just have to enter in your username and password, and then you can start the course. So that's how easy that is. Now, I haven't completed this yet, 
but i did post i think yeah the images i have posted already so all of these things you will be able to find over here uh this is uh by the way my website murtazahassan.com so you can go and check it out there the link will be in the description anyways so let's get started and the first thing we have to do where is it okay we have to find the windows link and we are going to download it now i used the magnetic link to download it using the torrent so once you download that you will have something like this so here you can see uh, we have the deep face lab so this is basically it's quite a big file it's about three gbs so what will happen is you will double click this and it will extract all the files so this is how it will look like once you open it up and you can click on run away uh, sorry run anyway <laughs> not run away uh, then you can extract here you know, wherever you want and then it will start the extraction process now i've already done that and here is the here are the files that you will see once you open up the folder mm, let me make it smaller okay so here are all the files and basically these are the steps that you have to follow so all of these are files that you can open up these are the batch files that will run straight away so and the workspace if you open that up it will have the uh, data destination and the data source so this is the actual uh, what do you call video that we want to implement on and this is the source uh, the source video that we want so we will be using this okay let me close that so i recommend that whenever you download this first of all start with the default videos so don't add your own video and try it out start with this video these two videos and follow the process and see if you get some good results if you are able to get some good results then you can put on your own video and you can replace that and work with that so what i've done is there's another folder i've created and this has the one that has my video as well so here the destination video is the same of elon musk and the source video is all is one of my videos i'm not sure which one but anyways here you can see that i'm talking and it is about one minute and the thing here is that uh, most of the time that i'm looking straight and my head is not tilting uh, a lot because i'm looking at the camera but for a good video you should have uh, left and right as well so you should tilt and you should record your video um, over there as well so but for this purpose what i will do is i will only focus on the part where he didn't move his head a lot so here you can see that um, it's moving quite a bit so there's a region here where the face is pretty much straight and it's only a little bit of uh, yeah movement over here so you can see that and hopefully it will give us good results over here and then later on we can add the videos uh, of the side angles as well and that should work better as well okay yeah one more thing i want to show is that where is it yeah this video you might have seen uh it, it is basically using the same technique uh, of deep uh, deep face lab and what they did was they created a video of tom cruise um and there you go So this is quite good and this was back in 2019 and as I mentioned before they are using the same technique that we will be using today and now we have an updated version which will perform even better than the previous versions. Okay so what we have to do once we have our model so this is the downloaded one so actually yeah so this is the new one so let's go and okay let's start with the basic uh, behind the scenes so what happens at the back so what happens is that we have three main steps the first one is extraction and then we have training and then we have conversion in the extraction part we are trying to detect the face 
so they are using face detection now the face detector they are using is basically single shot uh, scale invariant uh, face detector so you can read the paper for that uh, it will be available on my website and then you have the face alignment they are using 2d fan which is uh, basically 2d alignment of uh, face alignment network and then they are also using pr net so the 2d fan they are using for 2d uh, images and then where you have bigger angles where you are tilting a bit more they are using pr net and what happens is that they get these facial facial features and they align the image so here they have detected the face but here you can see the face is aligned so the eyes are uh, at the right position the nose is at the right position so this is what they mean by face alignment and then they do face segmentation so they do pixel by pixel they detect whether it's a face or not a face so every pixel either it's a face or it's not it's not a face so after the face segmentation what you get is a mask that will tell you where exactly your face is so they are using turnos net which is uh, derived from the u2 net which is used for segmentation and we have also seen its applications for background removal so that is good to know and then uh, again you can see the paper for this in the websites and then in the training part what happens is that you send in for example my image and then you have an encoder the encoder will basically encode the image to lower level image which will basically focus on the main features and the encodings of the face and once you have that there will be a decoder specific to my face that will decode that image back to a higher resolution so it's like it's learning how to draw so and the same thing will happen for the face of Elon Musk there will be an encoder which will uh, create the latent face and then it will go to the decoder and the decoder will try to create from that low level image it will try to create that high level image so in that process all the alignment all the features all the encodings will be saved and later on we will be able to use them so when i want to create my face based on the face of elon musk what we can do is we can use the same encoder and it will create that latent face but we can use my decoder to actually decode my face so it will have the same alignment uh, as uh, elon musk's face but it will be my face so that is the main idea so if it's a little bit hard to understand uh, let me give you an example let's say that we give a person some images of elephant and they learn how to draw that elephant okay so after learning how to draw those elephants now we give that person an image of a lion and we tell them that draw the elephant in the same pose as of the lion so then they should be able to draw the elephant with whatever shape that they require so whatever sorry pose that they require so i'm not sure if you're getting this but i'm hoping that you will <laughs> so so here you can see that this is the whole training process so once you start the training this is what you will see so i have labeled them here so this is the training image and this is the one here and then it will first of all use the encoder it will create the latent face and then this will be the lower resolution uh, face and then it will try to create a higher level uh, resolution face using the decoder so that is the result uh, that is the output and then the same thing will happen with the face of elon musk so this is the actual face then it will try to recreate using the decoder so it will create the latent face and then it will create the using the decoder it will create a high resolution image again and then uh, the fifth one is basically when you take it's the generation part when you take the face of elon musk and you use the encoder and create the latent face but then you use my encoder so that it has my face at the end so what you have to look at is the last column over here and when it starts to sharpen then you know that architecture has learned how to draw my face using the alignment or the pose of elon musk so then 
you should be good to go so when you are running all the iterations what you should look for is the sharpness in this last uh, column so if it's getting better if you are happy with the result over here then you should end the training process and as i've mentioned before you can see here this image is a little bit tilted so he's looking at the side and as you can see it's not drawing very well because my images most of them are looking straight they are not tilted and that is why the quality compared to the other images is quite poor over here okay so once you are done with the training then it will go to the conversion in the conversion now you can see that the color of uh, my face the lighting is way different than over here so it has to match so that is the first element where you have blending so in the blending part you are trying to merge these two images and what you can change is for example the scale of the face um, the size of the face the erosion how much you want to uh, how much of the face you want to merge and then the blurriness so things like that you can add uh, in the blending part and once you have done that you can sharpen it to make it appear more natural okay so this is basically the overview of course all of this information and you can read more about this on the actual paper and that could be found over here so you can read here or you can go to my website and as I mentioned before in the course you can find all the papers and the relevant details so let's have a look at the cheat sheet now here is the cheat sheet and we are going to follow the steps one by one so this is basically the result the final result and as you can see this is part eight where uh, the image is merged so we are going to start with step number zero which is to put the correct videos in the correct names and in the correct folders so here you have the source and destination videos so if we go to our folder so this is our workspace so here you can see we have the uh, what do you call let me actually change it to my video so I will copy I will copy my video and this is the new one that I just extracted so I will paste this here so this is what you will see so I will paste my video over here so it will replace the other video and now I have the destination as Elon Musk and I have my own video over here as the source so this is basically step number zero and this has to be in the workspace and it has to be exactly the same name you cannot change the name okay and then the first step is to clear the workspace now if you're running it first time it's not necessary but uh, when you're running it again and again so you might want to use this so we will press any key and that is done so we will close this and then we will go to uh, the step number two which is to extract the images out of the video so a video is basically a sequence of images so we need to extract them one by one so to do that now for every uh, step i have written down the exact what do you call file name that you have to use so here at number two extract images from video data source so we will look at that so extract images from video data source so we will double click on this so here we are going to keep the default settings so we are going to press enter now the idea here is that you should be able to run this with a minimum effort right out of the box so that's why we are using all the defaults but you can uh, change any parameters that you would like to so we will keep pressing enter and it will start the process so it will take a while to actually convert the video to images so now it's done and we will press any key to continue and there you go so if I go to my workspace now in the data source you can see that it has converted all the frames to images so the complete video is now converted into images and we have a total of 1900 images over here so this was our step number two video to images of the source 
and now we will go to step number three uh, maybe I should put it on the side here and this one on the side here okay so now we will go to step number three which is video to images destination so again so we have done it for this video which is the source now we have to do it for the destination video so we have to convert all the video uh, into images so we will go to uh, so here you can see extract images from video data destination full FPS so this is the file so we will double click that and again it will ask us for some parameters and we will keep them as default so if you keep pressing enter it will use the default settings as you can see here and then it will start with the process so again this will take a while to convert and once it's done we will have the new images so it's done now and we can press any key to continue and then if we go back to our workspace and now you can see in the data destination you can see all these images now so here we have 1600 images okay good so now we have done uh, the first three steps now we will go to the fourth one which is extract faces uh, from the source so basically from each of these images that we have taken out before from the video we need to find the face in each of these images so it will be uh, let's say this region here so let's go back and for this we are going to run uh, wait. the name of the file is data source face set extract so number four data source face set extract this is manual we don't want to do it manually so we will use this so we can double click that now here the thing is that if you have a gpu right now you can see that i have two gpus i'm using 980m in sli uh, configuration so if you don't have a gpu you can write cpu over here and that should work as well but because i have gpus and it supports multiple gpus i will press enter and it will use both of them by default so as you can see here it is using both of them zero and one and again if you don't have a, a gpu you can write here cpu and it should work as well so face type again we are not going to define anything we will keep it default and maximum number of faces we don't want to define uh, the image size is 512 and then the quality is 90 percent again all of these we are keeping at default we are just pressing enter okay so now the process is done i turn off the recording because it was making the process slow and you can see that it took about 10 minutes but uh, if i had stopped it earlier probably it will take um, a little bit lower now the thing is that you can see here images found 1904 and faces detected 1947 so i know that each image has a single face so this means that it has detected quite a bit more than there are actual faces and i will show you how you can fix that too but uh, for now we will go on to the second step and we will close this by clicking any button and then we can go to uh, number five which is data uh, destination face set extract so here we have number five this one data destination face set extract so we will double click that again it will ask us the same thing you can use the cpu or gpu i will press enter and it will grab the defaults and then we will keep pressing enter and it will start the extraction process and again i will pause the recording and then i will come back when it's done so now the extraction part is done and we can press any key to continue here surprisingly we have 1619 uh, images and we have 1619 faces so pretty much i think all of them are detected properly 
anyways so what we will do now is we will go back to our folder and we will go to the workspace and we will check out the images so first we did uh, number four extract the faces in source so we will go to data and then we will go to the aligned folder so in the aligned folder we will have all the faces so here you can see some of the images are either rotated or they are not actual faces so we have to delete those and if we go to our data uh, destination we will also have aligned and we can see that here we have all the faces as well okay so what we can do is to delete those images that are not right we can use 4.1 and 5.1 so 4.1 is basically to view and delete the aligned images so here we can see that this is the view aligned so we can double click on this so now you can see that we have our uh, images and here you can see we can select these the ones that are not actual faces we can select those and anything that is rotated tilted too much or scaled up like this we will delete so once you are done you can click on any of the images and you can right click and you can see you can say delete so you will uh, you will select all the tagged files so these are the tags that we have just made and then uh, I have selected 11 items and I'll press enter and it will delete all those images so again I'm not I'm not going to use this folder so I will not do all of these and then I can hit close and the same thing we can do for uh, with 5.1 where we can view the destination faces and we if we want to delete we can delete it from there so next is the training part which is the most interesting and the longest part so we will go to step number six which is train quick 96 and we will double click on that so here it will ask us that if you have a saved model so the good thing about this is that if you have already trained some model you can uh, start the training process again where you left off so that's why you can save the model and you can start it back again so this here is a clean folder so we don't have any previous models in it so we are going to create a new name so here let's say I will put my name then I will write Elon and then I will write version 1 and again we will choose the either CPU or we can use the GPU so uh, if you don't have the GPU you can write CPU but in this case I will press enter because I want to use the defaults so this step will take a while just uh, to start even and once it starts then it will show up a window so let's wait for that window to pop up so there we have it now the training process has started and as you can see this is the training preview so um, now you can see that this is not actually a face but as I mentioned before uh, this is not the actual folder I'm using uh, I will show you the one I have already trained and it works well so here you can see that now the model is trying if you remember the decoder is trying to create recreate my face and the face of Elon Musk and at the starting point it's not very good so as it moves along it will learn how to recreate our faces so the decoder for me will be different than the decoder for Elon Musk and if you can see over here on the right hand side the alignment and the pose of the face is uh, should be the same as of the Elon Musk so this face should have the same alignment and the pose as this face over here and you can see here it's not good because it just started it has been 172 iterations and this is the loss it will keep going down so the further it goes the better it is and you can press the P button to actually preview the next iteration so if I keep pressing P it will change and now you can see that it is slowly and gradually it is actually um, getting better so here you can see at least the alignment or, or the pose is a little bit better here you can see that even though it is still blur it's not very clear 
but is getting there okay so what I will do now is I will not go through the whole process I will uh, stop this here and I will go to the previous model that I've already trained so uh, by the way at any point if you want to close you have to press enter and it will save the model so if I press enter now it will save this model you can see and it's done so next time if I come back to training now it will ask me if I want to use the previous model or if I want to create a new one so if I write zero over here it will use the previous model and if I write a new name it will use that new name so let's say if I put zero and it is loading the previous model now and then again I can use uh, my GPU and then it will start the training process so I will not go through that again instead I will go back to the one I did earlier so this is pretty much the same that we had earlier and it has this uh, data source and the data destination these are the results files that I will show you at the end once we are done with the, all of the training so I can double click on train and now it's asking me again uh, this was the model I created earlier new model one so I can press zero and that it will load this and I want to use the GPU so here you can see that I have already run it for 64,000 iterations so if I go here and click on P you can see now it is iterating and the images are much clearer than before but again if you see the ones that are quite tilted then you will not get a good result here even with a lot of iterations because um, my face was mostly uh, looking straight so if you want uh, on the sides as well then you have to add some examples of your face looking towards the side so for this example I think 60 to 70 thousand is more than enough because it's only looking straight but if you want all uh, the angles and you have good amount of data I would highly recommend that you go above a hundred thousand images a uh, hundred thousand iterations so that will give you some good results and you can go as far as uh, 200,000 or 300,000 as well depending upon your patience and the quality of results that you want so uh, especially if you see here the decoders they are uh, giving a very good output you can see that the image is very clear even for Elon Musk now when it comes to uh, the generation part it is still lacking a little bit especially in the drastic uh, changes in the angles of face so I'm going to stop this here so I can press enter and it will stop that uh, and there you go it is saved and then I can close this and I can move on to the next step which is to merge so if I click on merge quick 96 and again I have to use the same model I will press 0 and I will use the GPU So I will press enter, enter. So now it has started up and here you can see that we have a few buttons that we can use to manipulate these properties. So we have uh, erode mask, blur mask, motion blur, super resolution, blur or sharpen, then face scale. And we have all of these different things that we can do. But for now, we are going to look at erode, blur, and uh, face scale. So face scale is basically how big, um, actually, let me show you. So you can press on tab. So here you can see that it says switch screens. So you can press on tab and it will show you the first frame. So if it's black or if it's not showing uh, the actual face, you can go to the next frame. So here you can see that, uh, where is it written? Uh, it was written somewhere here. Yeah, here so you can go to the next frame by pressing uh, this uh, greater than sign so I can press that and now you can see that my face is overlaid on top of that now here you can see that uh, it is not properly overlaid especially in terms of the color so it's not blending so here we have to apply the blending part so the options that we have here is first of all we have uh, the scale so you can press u and j so if i press it 
uh, two times for example if I press U J you can see it's getting bigger if I press U you can see it's getting smaller so you can change that and then if I go back then we have erode mask which is W and S then if I press W you can see the effect it's it gets smaller and then if I press S it will get bigger so we have to play around with these parameters to get uh, the right facial alignments and what do you call yeah, I think it's good over here okay so then we can use the blur which is E and D so this is the one that will have the most uh, dramatic effect so if I press E and by the way you can see the changes over here so these are the values so this is the value of the erode this is the value of the blur so if we go back here uh, if I press the E button you can see it adds the blur and now it's blending much more efficiently and if I press the D button it will remove so here you can see 24 23 15 it's going back so what we want to do oh I press the wrong one what we want to do is we want to increase the blur so that it blends quite well so maybe a hundred let's try that out yeah it's not bad maybe 80 mm, maybe a little bit more okay so you can play around with these parameters to actually uh, find the good results so once you have the desired result we will go back and here first of all we will uh, use this operation so we will press the shift key and then we will uh, press the slash or the question mark so this is to override CFT to the next frame and override CFT up to the last frame so we will do this so let's go back and we will press shift and question mark or slash and that is done and then we will go back and then we will apply uh, the processing to the remaining frames so shift and greater key again shift and greater key so we'll go back and we will press shift and greater key and this will start the merger process so this will take a while so now the merging is complete and we can close this window and now we will head on to the last step which is merge to mp4 so what I've done is I've deleted the old uh, result videos and now if I go back it should generate the new one so let's go to merge to mp4 and here we are going to keep the same parameters and if we go back to our workspace and there you go so the result has popped up so the result now is complete and now it's creating another video which is the result mask okay so now the process is complete and we can press any key to continue and if we go to the result mask first you can see that this is basically the face moving around and you can see that the blurriness at the edges that we added um, what was it 80% something like that so you can see that so here is the result so here the first thing I can observe is that it's just moving out so maybe we want to decrease the size uh, sorry not the size the erosion so now um, if, if you talk about the the sides again it will not be good for example here it will not be good because it did not have any images of me uh, in this position so that is expected but we are focusing on the parts where it's looking straight so here it looks really good except for this part where as I've mentioned I think the erosion needs to be a little bit less and then seems good good so let, let's play it
expand the scope and scale of human consciousness, I, I find that incredibly exciting. Uh, that makes me glad to be alive. Okay, so this was the example without the side images, but let's look at the example with the side images. And I think I trained it for about 60,000 uh, iterations as well. I think it was 100,000 and not 60,000. But anyways, let's have a look at this video from the very start. But the, life cannot just be about solving one miserable problem after another. Can't, that can't be the only thing. There need, to be, there need to be things that inspire you, that make you glad to, be, to wake up in the morning and be part of humanity. That's why we did this. This guy called Tsiolkovsky, one of the early Russian rocket scientists, the great saying, Earth is the cradle of humanity. You cannot stay in the cradle forever. It is time to go forth, become a star-faring civilization, be out there among the stars, expand the scope and scale of human consciousness. I, I find that incredible incredibly exciting. Uh, that, that makes me glad to be alive. So as you can see here, the results are much better than my video. And you can see that. Uh, and, and this is mainly because we have the side angles of uh, the other face here as well. So that is very important to keep in mind. So and the reason I didn't put my uh, side face is because I wanted to test it out right out of the box and just to put a random video. I didn't put a lot of effort trying to create a similar video because I wanted to see the result of what would happen if I just took a video and just ran it. And to be honest, I'm surprised. It is a very good result. Uh, you can see that at some point it's a bit hard to tell that it is actually fake. But again, it's not perfect, but with minimal effort, I would say it is a very good video, it's a very good start, and with a little bit more work, it can go a lot further. Earth is the cradle of humanity, but you cannot stay in the cradle forever. It is time to go forth, become a star-faring civilization, be out there among the stars, but the... Life cannot just be about solving one miserable problem after another. Can't, that can't be the only thing. There need, to be, there need to be things that inspire you, that make you glad to, be, to wake up in the morning and be part of humanity. That's why we did this. This guy called Tsiolkovsky, one of the early Russian rocket scientists, the great saying, Earth is the cradle of humanity, but you cannot stay in the cradle forever. It is time to go forth, become a star-faring civilization, be out there among the stars, expand the scope and scale of human consciousness. I, I find that incredibly exciting. Uh, th that makes me glad to be alive. I, I hope you feel the same way. So, this is it uh, for the deep fake part and as I've mentioned that you can uh, get these files from my website and hopefully if you go step by step you will not face any issues but if you do put them in uh, the comments or share them on the discord channel and I will be happy to help and don't forget to subscribe to my new channel which is all about web development and if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do that and hit the like button and I will see you in the next one.